All right, good morning, Saints. Um, I'm going to quickly just uh, show you guys an error of this guy from his book, um, Rightly Dividing the Bible, Volume 1. This is from uh, The Basics and Background of Dispensationalism by David E. Walker. David E. Walker is a Ruckmanite. He's a disciple of Peter Ruckman. And uh, I do believe that Peter Ruckman was a heretic. He taught faith and works in the old in the Old Testament, and he also believed that tribulation saints in the future are going to be saved by works. And um, the guy, the David E. Walker, is a disciple of uh, uh, Peter Ruckman. But in this video, I wanted to deal with a specific um, thing he says here concerning the passage on Mark sixteen fifteen through eighteen. And I'm just going to read this, uh, just this short paragraph. But he says, Heresy begins with verses when verses are taken out of their doctrinal context and applied elsewhere. So I would agree with that. And it happens all the time. And then continuing, he says, For example, Some try to apply Mark 16, 15 through 18 to us today because after all, we should go into all the world and preach the gospel. The problem with this reasoning is that the historical application of Mark 16 is clearly aimed at the first century period during the time of the apostles. We know this to be true because the book of Acts records records or uh, sorry, we know this to be true because the book of Acts records these signs quote unquote Mark 6, 16, 17 taking place and they have not occurred since. So as you can see, there's just a lot of error in what he says. First of all, now, no one, no, he's right, we should not ignore the context of Mark 16. And he's dealing with these specific verses, Mark 16, 15. I'm just going to go ahead and read it. He says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So what David E. Walker is saying is that verses 15 to 18 do not apply to Christians today. Because according to his mind, they don't, they're, it's only referring to the apostles. Well, obviously the context is to the apostles because Christ is directly speaking to his apostles right before he ascends into heaven. He's giving them the great commission, which we call uh, the preaching the gospel is a great commission. And then also continuing that is is uh, down to verse 18 because for verse 15 and 18 all connect to each other. It's not separate. Now, the, the context is obviously to the apostles, but we also see this being practiced in the early church of the book of Acts. But according to David e. Walker's mind is that Mark's 15, the preaching of the gospel is only to the apostles and not something that we should not take for us, that the context should not be for us. I would have to disagree with that because we do see that even in the book of Acts, we do see the um, the early church preaching the gospel. And we also see that the preaching of the gospel is taught in the epistles. So to really say that this verse has just no bearing for Christians today, and that's just only for the apostles, it's completely uh, just uh, messing up the scriptures. Because we, we do see this even threading into the, uh, the book of Acts as well as the, uh, the, uh, the epistles. But according to David E. Walker's uh, thinking, that doesn't apply to us today. Because after all, as he, it's almost like he makes fun of that view. After all, we have to preach the gospel. In his own words, he says, 
today because after all we should go into all the world and preach the gospel the problem with his reasoning is that the historical application mark 16 is clearly aimed at the first century period during the time of the apostles as i said the the context obviously is the apostles but one general rule of thumb is that if it's taught in the gospels by the by Christ, and we see it being practiced in the early church, and if it's taught in the epistles, and we can safely say that it's for us. To say that the Great Commission in Mark 16, 15 is not for us, and he almost like just mocks the idea that we, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, you go to that verse, jump to that verse as a uh, support for, for preaching the gospel, and I would have to disagree with him. And, um, I wanted to deal with the other part he says. He says, The problem with his reasoning is that the historical application of Mark 16 is clearly aimed at the first century period during the time of the apostles. We know this to be true because the book of Acts records, the quote-unquote, these signs, Mark 17, taking place, and they have not occurred since. So let's break that down. He says, Mark, 7, Mark 16, 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe, and my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. And this ties in with, uh, I'm going to read the verse before that says, In he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So according to David E. Walker, this, this passage in Mark 17, because he ties it in with just simply being the apostles, oh, this is only a period of the apostles, therefore these signs that occur in Mark 17 are not happening today. Because in David E. Walker's mind is that he's seen this only to be for the apostles and not for us today. And again, he's in error because we do see this happening in the book of Acts. We do see these signs happening in the book of Acts. We see the early church. The book of Acts, I think, is a misunderstood book by a lot of believers. Some believers go to extremes concerning the book of Acts. And they think that the book of Acts... You have one extreme that says that, well, the book of Acts, yes, we can't, we shouldn't go to the book of Acts, we shouldn't go to the, we shouldn't use it for doctrine, uh, because uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of the stuff there in the book of Acts that's passed already, therefore we should not use it, or we should not go there for doctrine. And then the other extreme is the, what I call the charismania, the hyper charismatic and not keeping it in balance. But the reality is the book of Acts, although it is historical, we should not we should always keep that in mind. It is there is doctrine for the church there. It's it's what normative Christianity should look like today. The book bears the name of the apostles, but it does have we do see how the Holy Ghost, God of the Holy Ghost, is working through the apostles, but not only just the apostles, we also see the Holy Ghost working through ordinary believers, as well as, in general, the early church. And we do see signs and wonders happening. We see the early church uh, using their gifts. Um, we see them preaching the gospel. So that's what normative Christianity looks like. It's a, it's a blueprint. You could say it's God's model for the church. It's, it's a model that every church should follow. So going back to uh, verse 17, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. So he says that this, that this verse should not be used because, according to his mind, these signs shall follow them is referring to only the apostles. But there's, there's a problem with his reasoning there because if, if this verse is only... Sorry, excuse me. The book unfolded. It's like saying the the verse 15, so we should not preach the gospel today because ver it's tied in with verse 17. But there's there's a lot of problem with this uh his view because the reality is that verse 17 is actually tied in with verse 15. It's tied in with the with the um with the preaching of the gospel. In verse 15, you have the preaching of the gospel. 
And then verses 16 ties in with that of uh, saying that those who um, believe and are baptized shall be saved, but those who do, do not believe in the gospel are going to be damned. And then verse 17 and 18, he talks about the signs, which I call the charismatic signs that tie in with the, verse 15, the Great Commission, and is a confirmation of the preaching of the gospel. But David E. Walker doesn't see that because he's putting his, his, his uh, lens into the text. So verse 17, according to him, is just only apostolic. And according to him, in his own words, he says, uh, We know this to be true because the book of Acts records these signs taking place and they have not occurred since. So according to his, his bold claim there is that verse 17, these signs have not happened since then. And the man is just very ignorant on church history. For the first three centuries, there actually has been, uh, it's recorded in church history that there were actually signs and wonders taking place, even prophecies. The charismatic ministry was there. Um, if you read a church, there's a book um, I recommend called uh, Charismatic Gifts in the Early Church. I forget the name of the author, but he goes through, he actually records the, the charismatic gifts even after the apostles have been long, uh, long, long gone. He records it for the first three centuries. There have been signs and wonders, prophecies, uh, heal, uh, gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. I mean, there's been so many of these, these gifts that were recorded in the early church for the first three centuries. For him to say that his claim that there, these signs have not taken place since then is just flat out ignorance of church history. He has to say that because it has to go in connection to his system. He has to say that. And it says, taking place and they have not occurred since. Prophetically, he says, Mark 16, 15, 18 has specific burial Sorry, it has specific reference to the gospel of the kingdom. Not the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That gospel of the kingdom will be preached during the great tribulation with accompanying signs and, signs and power. So again, according to his view is that Mark 16, 15 His reference has specific reference prophetically according to him to the gospel of the kingdom. And again, he's wrong because the gospel of the kingdom is not seen here. Now, it's important, brethren, to understand that um, what he's referring to the gospel of the kingdom is, is the, uh, the good news that Christ preached along with John the Baptist. The good news while he was on earth that he was going to set up his earthly millennial visible kingdom on earth. That's the gospel of the kingdom. Now, in, under all dispensations, there's only one plan of salvation, one gospel. But the gospel of the kingdom must not be confused with that one gospel that is under all dispensations. You can say, in other words, that one plan of salvation. He sees it according to these, these verses that prophetically, prophetically, it, Mark 16, 15 through 18 is speaking of the gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of the death, burial, and the resurrection. And I don't know where in the world this guy gets that view because these four verses say nothing about the gospel of the kingdom, but it's referring to the gospel of Christ. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In fact, this is the first time we see in the New Testament where the gospel of Jesus Christ is commanded. And yes, it's commanded to the apostles, but we also see it that early Christians are preaching it in the book of Acts. So I don't know where he gets the idea that the gospel of the kingdom is somehow to, in these four verses. I, you can't pull it out of these four verses. Because the gospel that Christ is saying in verse 15 is tying into his death, burial, and resurrection. He's not telling them to go preach the gospel of the kingdom. He's telling them to preach his gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. 
and all the way down to 18, because verses 16, 17, 18 um, are tying in with uh, his gospel. All tie in with his gospel. Verse 17, 18 are the signs of these that, show, that believe in him. Those that believe in Christ are going to do these exact signs. They have that authority, that kingdom authority, that authority in Jesus. And then he says uh, at the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ um, that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached during the great tribulation with accompanying signs and power. Now he's right about that, that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached during the great tribulation. In fact, that's actually recorded in, uh, if you guys read in Mark, uh, sorry, uh, Matthew 24, which is a prophetic chapter about the uh, end times. And by that time, the church is gone because there is no reference to the church once. All the language that's spoken of there is completely Jewish. Um, I think there's a passage there where Christ says, And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world, and then the end shall come. Now that's referring to the gospel of the kingdom, not, not to be confused with Christ's gospel. Because the gospel of the kingdom is not one and the same. But I just wanted to quickly show this uh, short chapter from his book, Rightly Dividing the Word. Um, now, the there is some good in this book, but the guy is a Peter Ruckmanite. He's a follower or a disciple, you could say, of Peter Ruckman. And this guy is a heretic. He supports faith and works, a work system in the Old Testament, as well as in the during the tribulation period that which we we call the seven year tribulation um peter ruckman was the first one who came up with that to my knowledge unless i'm wrong you guys can correct me in the video but to my knowledge peter ruckman was the one that came up with that salvation the differences of salvation even though the god the dispensations have nothing to do with salvation the dispensation is god's dealings with man not salvations and this is where the confusion comes in unfortunately this guy just from what we've seen in scripture is confused and he has to say all that because it has to go in line with his system and it often surprises me how guys like this and this guy is a, i believe a teacher at a bible institute somewhere in florida how these guys will literally follow their own systems rather than just the plain reading of the text of the bible it's amazing how these guys can get so blind to their own systems that they cannot see. Just to recap very quickly, this guy believes that the Great Commission given to us in Mark 16, 15 shouldn't really is only for the apostles. Um, verses 16 to 17, 18, the signs they're referring to only the apostles and they have not occurred since then, even though that's ignoring church history. And it really just it just shows the ignorance of, of of Mr. Walker not actually looking into church history to see that there has been recorded signs and wonders um, throughout church history, specifically in the first three centuries, long after the apostles had passed away. And uh, verse fifteen, as I said, he doesn't see that being it's only instructional for the apostles, and while wow, that is true. We do see that being practiced in the early church, and it's also taught in the in the uh, epistle. So we can conclude that's us, for us today. So I'm, I only did this quick video because I just wanted to show you guys um, teachers like this. Don't don't fall for these teachers that sound like they they know what they're talking about. But always go to the Bible as your primary source source of authority. Don't be fooled by these guys. They, they, they just come like wolves. Um, don't fall for them. The Bible tells us to uh, prove all things and hold fast that which is good. 1 Thessalonians 5.21, Paul tells us that to prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Everything must be proved. How do you prove? There has to be an absolute truth, right, to prove that. And the only way we prove it is through God's word. Um, so don't fall for these guys. Be careful on who you listen to online. 
And uh, as the times go by, the end times, we're starting to see more and more false teachers rise. And uh, now there is some good, as I said in the book, and, you know, whatever teacher you listen to, there, there may be some truth there, but everything must be checked through the scriptures. And I end with, as I said right now, that uh, with 1 Thessalonians 5.21, to prove all things and hold fast that which is good. So thank you for listening. God bless.